A very good day to everyone. My name is Vasita Ravichandran. I am a postgraduate student of Master of Science in Applied Physics at University of Malaya. Would like to present my alternative assessment for the course SQA7024 Organic Electronic Devices. In this video, I am going to be talking about the theory of charge transport in organic semiconductor and how the theory can be incorporated in the working mechanism of an organic electronic devices. So, without further ado, let's get started. Organic semiconductors are materials made of carbon-based molecules such as polymers and small molecules that have semiconducting properties. These materials are used in a variety of electronic devices including organic solar cells, organic light emitting diodes or LEDs, and organic field effect transistors or FETs. In solar cells, organic semiconductors are used to absorb light and generate charge carriers which are then transported to the electrodes. In OLEDs, the organic semiconductors are used to emit light when a voltage is applied across the device. In OFETs, the organic semiconductors are used as the active channel material and the gate dielectric. Organic semiconductors can be classified into two main categories, which are conjugated polymers and small molecules. Conjugated polymers are long chains of repeating units that are connected by alternating single and double bonds, which allows for the movement of electrons along the chain whereas small molecules are typically composed of a small number of atoms and have a more defined chemical structure. Organic semiconductors have several advantages over traditional inorganic semiconductors such as silicon. These advantages include lower cost. Organic semiconductors can be processed at lower temperatures and with less expensive equipment, making them cheaper to produce. Next, flexibility. Organic semiconductors can be deposited on a variety of flexible and lightweight substrates such as plastic or paper which makes them well suited for use in flexible electronics. Next, transparency. Some organic semiconductors are transparent which can be useful for certain applications such as transparent displays. Then, tunability. The electrical properties of organic semiconductors can be easily tuned by altering the molecular structure of the materials, which allows for a wide range of potential applications. Lastly, biocompatibility. Organic semiconductors can be made from biocompatible materials, which makes them well suited for use in biomedical applications such as bioelectronics. Now that we know what is organic semiconductors and their applications in organic devices, now let us find out what is charge transport and is charge transport important for organic devices? The answer to that question is a yes. Charge transport is very important in organic devices because it determines the device's electric performance. Organic devices such as solar cells, transistors, and light-emitting diodes rely on the efficient transport of charges such as electrons and holes through the active layer of the device. The ability of the organic material to transport charges efficiently is one of the key factors that determines the device's performance such as its efficiency and stability. The charge transport properties of organic materials are often complex and highly dependent on the microstructure of the material, such as the degree of crystallinity, the presence of defects, and the morphology of the material. Therefore, understanding and controlling the charge transport properties of organic materials is a key area of research in the field of organic electronics. Therefore, charge transport is important in organic devices because it determines the device's electrical performance and it is the key factor that determines the device's efficiency and stability. In organic semiconductors, charge transport can occur through several different mechanisms. 
The three main types of charge transport are first, band transport, second, multiple trap and release transport, and third, hopping transport. The type of charge transport that occurs in a particular organic semiconductor will depend on the specific material and the conditions under which it is used. In order to design and optimize organic semiconductor devices, it is important to understand the charge transport mechanisms in the materials being used. Now let me briefly give a short introduction for each of the mentioned types of charge transport. Starting off with the band transport. Band transport in organic semiconductor refers to the movement of electrons and holes through the material in order to generate electrical current. Organic semiconductors are composed of conjugated molecules or polymers and their unique electronic properties allow for efficient charge transport. The band transport process in organic semiconductors is governed by the electronic band structure of the material. Organic semiconductors typically have a narrow band gap, which means that the energy difference between the highest occupied molecular orbital or HOMO and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital or LUMO is small. This allows for efficient light absorption and generation of electron hole paths. When an organic semiconductor is illuminated, the absorbed light excites electrons from the HOMO to the LUMO, creating electron hole paths. These electrons and holes are then able to move through the material due to the presence of a finite density of states in the conduction and valence bands. The energy difference between the HOMO and LUMO determines the type of semiconductor and the efficiency of the material in absorbing and emitting light. Besides that, the theory of multiple trapping and release, or also known as MTR transport, in organic semiconductors describes how charge carriers move through the material by repeatedly being trapped and released by defects or impurities. When an organic semiconductor absorbs light and generates electron hole pairs, these charges can become trapped at defects or impurities within the material known as traps. These traps can act as barriers to the movement of charges, slowing down or even halting the charge transport process. However, the charges can also be released from the traps and continue to move through the material. The presence of multiple traps in an organic semiconductor can lead to a complex charge transport process with charges being trapped and released at various locations within the material. This can result in a non-uniform distribution of charges and a reduction in the overall efficiency of the material for charge transport. Multiple trap and release can be mitigated by using appropriate doping agents to passivate the traps or by engineering the molecular structure of the organic semiconductor to reduce the number of defects and impurities. Lastly is the hopping transport. Hopping transport is a mechanism of charge transport that can occur in organic semiconductors. It refers to the movement of charges through the material by hopping from one localized state to another rather than through a continuous band of states as in band transport. In organic semiconductors, the electronic structure is often described by a disordered energy landscape with a large number of localized electronic states such as defects or impurities. These localized states can act as traps for electrons and holes, slowing down or even halting the charge transport process. However, the charges can also move through the material by hopping from one localized state to another. This process is known as hopping transport. The rate of hopping transport is determined by the probability of finding a nearby localized state with a lower energy as well as the energy difference between the initial and final states. 
Hopping transport is generally less efficient than band transport as it is affected by the presence of defects and impurities in the material and by the temperature. Hopping transport typically dominates in materials with low carrier mobility or high disorder. So now that I have explained the types of charge transport exist in organic semiconductor, hence in the next part of my video, I'm going to be more specific by selecting poly-3-hexyltheophene or also known as P3HT as my organic semiconductor and will be explaining the theory of the type of charge transport of the P3HT and how the theory is incorporated into the working mechanism of organic solar cells or also known as OSCs. P3HT or also known as poly-3-hexyltheophene is a conjugated polymer that has been widely studied as a material for organic solar cells. Organic solar cells are a type of photovoltaic device that converts light energy into electrical energy using organic materials. P3HT is a P-type semiconductor, which means it has a higher hole mobility than electron mobility. As a result, P3HT is typically used as the electron acceptor in OSCs where it is blended with a small molecule electron donor such as PCBM to form the active layer of the solar cell. The active layer of the solar cell is where the light is absorbed and the charges are generated. The P3HT chains in the active layer form of a conjugated backbone and allow for efficient charge transport and recombination. The P3HT and PCBM blend in the active layer forms a bulk heterojunction, which allows for efficient in charge separation and collection. P3HT has been found to have a relatively low open circuit voltage in organic solar cells which limits the overall efficiency of the device. However, several approaches have been proposed to overcome this limitation, such as blending P3HT with other conjugated polymers, such as P.PSS, or using P3HT in combination with other electron acceptors, such as fullerene derivatives. In summary, P3HT is a widely studied material for organic solar cells and is used as an electron acceptor material in bulk heterojunction solar cells. Its performance is limited by its low open circuit voltage, but research is ongoing to overcome this limitation. In P3HT, Band transport is the mechanism by which charge carriers move through the conjugated polymer backbone with the help of the delocalized pi electrons. This mechanism is similar to the way charge transport occurs in inorganic semiconductors and it is characterized by a high mobility and a relatively low disorder. The conjugated backbone of P3HT is composed of repeating units of theophene and hexyl side groups which are connected by single bonds. The HOMO, also known as highest occupied molecular orbital, and LUMO, also known as lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of P3HT, are important factors in determining its electronic properties. The HOMO is typically localized on the theophene ring, while the LUMO is localized on the alkyl side chains. The pi electrons in the theophene ring are delocalized, allowing them to move freely along the polymer chain. The delocalization of pi electrons is what gives P3HT its semiconducting properties. When light is absorbed by P3HT, it excites an electron from the valence band to the conduction band, creating a hole in the valence band 
and an electron in the conduction band. These charge carriers can then move through the polymer chain via band transport. The mobility of the charge carriers in P3HT is determined by the strength of the interactions between the pi electrons and the surrounding environment such as the polymer chain and the solvent. The band transport mechanism in P3HT is characterized by a high mobility of charges, allowing for a faster and more efficient transport of charges through the device. This is important for achieving high brightness and efficiency in organic solar cells. However, the mobility of holes in P3HT is relatively low compared to inorganic semiconductors and it is affected by the disorder in the polymer chains which can cause scattering of the charge carriers. In organic solar cells, the mechanism of charge transport can be divided into two main stages which are exciton generation and charge separation. Exciton generation is when a photon is absorbed by the active layer of the solar cell, it creates an exciton which is a bound state of an electron and hole. Whereas charge separation is the exciton that migrates to the interface between the active layer and the electron transport layer where the electron and hole are separated and collected by the electrons. The charge transport mechanism in organic solar cells is typically governed by diffusion, which is a statistical process where charge carriers move from regions of high concentration to regions of low concentration. The efficiency of charge transport in organic solar cells is influenced by the thickness of the active layer, the mobility of the charge carriers, and the quality of the interfaces between the layers. Another important point is that the charge separation mechanism is dependent on the energy level alignment at the interface between the active layer and the electron transport layer which is achieved by using materials with suitable energy levels. In P3HT based organic solar cells, charge transport occurs via a process called band transport. Band transport is based on the movement of charge carriers through the material rather than by diffusion. When a photon is absorbed by the P3HT active layer, it creates an exciton, which is a bound state of an electron and hole. The exciton then migrates to the interface between the P3HT active layer and the electron transport layer, where it dissociates into a free electron and hole. The free electron and hole are then able to move through the material due to the presence of a band gap which allows them to move freely without being bound to each other. The dissociation of the exciton is facilitated by the energy level alignment at the interface, which is achieved by using materials with suitable energy levels. The electron transport layer typically has a higher electron affinity than the P3HT active layer, which helps to pull the electron away from the hole. The dissociated electron and hole are then collected by the electrodes with the electrons being collected by the cathode and the holes being collected by the anode. The collected charges then flow through the external circuit to generate electricity. The efficiency of charge transport in P3HT based organic solar cells is influenced by several factors such as the thickness of the active layer, the mobility of the charge carriers, and the quality of the interfaces between the layers. The energy level alignment at the interface between the P3HT active layer and the electron transport layer is also crucial for the charge separation mechanism. 
With that, I would like to end my presentation on the theory of charge transport in organic semiconductors and its incorporation in the working mechanisms of organic devices. Thank you so much for listening.